Okay, so how to find equivalent equations. When you look for equivalent equations, you're essentially looking for an equation that actually means the same thing as the original equation, it just looks different. So when you find equivalent equations, you do it by, do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So if you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, you will be left with another equivalent equation. So do the same thing to both sides of an equation. I'm going to just abbreviate that as equa just a period equation, okay? So now, remember, that's also what you do to solve an equation or move things around because you don't always want to solve it. Sometimes you just want to move things around. So anytime you do the same thing to both sides and then you simplify, that result is an equivalent equation. So let's see. Equivalent equations also is a tip. Equivalent equations always have the same solution. They all will have the same solution. So now, to prove that, I made, up a, I made up a question, and I made up an equation, and I wrote it three different times. And technically, there's a fourth option you could also do. And if we have room, I'll squeeze it in. So this is the same equation, but we're, I'm going to show you three different ways to start it. And what you're going to do is you're going to realize that they're all going to give us a slightly different looking equivalent equation but they all are gonna mean the same thing because they all will have the same solution. So let's see, before we start solving this equivalent equation, let's make sure we understand how to move things around in the equation. So what I mean is this, allow me to show you what I mean. What we have right here, 2x, 2x is a term, minus four is a term. Minus four can also be thought of neg as negative four. Plus six is a term, which can be thought as a positive six, and then negative three x is also a term. So those four items, he, this is a term, this is a term, this is a term, this is a term. They are all terms that we can move around anytime you move an entire term. As in, one of those four items, you always add and subtract. You do that because what separates terms is addition sub or subtraction. Addition signs, subtraction signs, or maybe minus signs over here, or I guess the same thing is right there, or negative signs. Those, because remember, subtraction, negative could be the same thing. Those separate terms. Okay, so when you move an entire term to the other side, you always do it by doing the opposite of that term to both sides. Meaning, in this first version of our equation right here, we're going to start off by maybe doing what we normally would do as if we were to solve it. If you were doing what I always do in solving equations with variables on both sides, I always do the mutant chicken method. I move my x's towards the bigger x. Okay, so if we were to follow that, we would move the, the little, the smaller one towards the bigger one. Negative three x is smaller than positive two x, so that's the one we're going to move. So let's see. The opposite of negative three x is positive three x. Well, when you think positive, think plus. If you want to think of that as minus three x up there, that's fine. You can think of that as minus three x. So the opposite of minus 3x or negative 3x is add 3x. So we're going to add 3x to both sides of our equation. And when we do that, those cancel because minus 3x and plus 3x, those are opposites. So on the left side, we are left with a positive 6. We know it's positive 6 because of this plus sign in front of the 6. That plus sign tells us plus 6, think positive 6. Now remember, technically, the this equals zero, so when you add zero plus six, it's still positive six. So it means the same thing. Okay, so let's see, we've got six equals. Now on the right side, two x plus three x, well, two x plus three x gives us five x. So we have five x. And now anything you have not touched, just bring it straight down. We did not touch the minus four, so it comes straight down as minus four. We did not touch the six, so that six came straight down as six. We only affected the x's in our equation. So take a look. As of this step right now, we have an equivalent equation to the original. Now, I'm not going to solve that one just yet. I'll come back to it. But I just want you to know that is an equivalent equation to the original equation right here. The, equi the original is the black one you see going across the screen. That is a possible equivalent equation. That's one possible one. Technically, there's, a, there's an infinite amount. Because remember, technically, you can, add, you can do whatever you want to both sides. You can add a million to both sides. You can divide a million on both sides. Technically, you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. 
However, we're not going to do those extreme cases. We're just going to say, what should we do to make a simplified equivalent equation? Meaning, do something that helps you by, for example, we went from having four terms on the left side to where we now only have three, six, five x, and minus four. So we simplified. So it's a simplified equivalent equation. Most of the time, those are the kind we talked about because they're the ones that really matter. All right, so now let's go to the middle one. Instead of moving 3x, let's say let's move to plus 6 instead. If we, want to, if we want to start by moving plus 6 to the other side, you technically can. It may not be the mutant chicken method, but it's going to be one that's going to, it's still something you're allowed to do, and it's going to give you an equivalent equation. So let's see. The opposite of plus 6 is minus 6. So you subtract 6 on both sides. And when you line it up over here, you always line it up underneath its like term. Neg minus 6 does not have a variable. Minus 4 does not have a variable. Therefore, they are like terms. They both do not have a variable. Whereas on the left, we had 2x and 3x. Those both had a variable, so they were like terms. We lined them up with each other. Okay, so they line up over here, they, and we, they line up here. We know that plus 6 and negative 6, minus 6, those cancel. So we know that we are left with the, the negative 3x drops straight down. The 2x drops straight down. So we've got, we've got negative 3x. That 6 is gone, so equal sign comes straight down. Oh, and speaking of which, your equal sign comes straight down on this one too. Okay, So now equal sign comes straight down. So now let's see, 2x comes straight down. So now you just have to ask yourself, you've got negative 4 minus 6. What is negative 4 minus 6? So let's see, when you minus, you go left. So if you start at negative 4 and you go left, that means you're going deeper into the negatives. So that's going to give you negative 10. So negative 10. So now, what you have right there is an equivalent equation to the original equation. Negative 3x equals 2x minus 10. That is an equivalent equation to the original equation that we started with up here. So look, those two equivalent equations that we have right here and right here, they look different from each other, but they are also equivalent to each other. Okay. So now, the original we started with has many equivalent equations. We've now shown two possibilities. So when you take your test, there are going to be three questions that say, which one of these options is equivalent to the original equation. So you'll want to check to see what did they do to both sides to get what they have. Because three of those options are going to be nonsense, where they may have added 6 on one side and subtracted 6 on the other. So they did not do the same thing to both sides. So be special, pay special attention to that. So now let's see. We'll, we'll do one more option over here. We've got, we're going to, instead of moving the negative 3x to the plus 6, we're going to move, let's say, the minus 4. So if you move the minus 4 first, the opposite of minus 4 is plus 4, so we're going to add 4 to both sides. Remember to line up like terms when you do it to both sides. So they cancel on the right side. So now, let's see. On the left, what we're left with on the left side is the, the negative 3x drops straight down. Okay? Now, plus 6 plus 4, that means positive 6 plus 4. That gives us positive 10, otherwise known as plus 10. We then have equals. We're going to drop down our 2x. So we have negative 3x plus 10 equals 2x. That is an equivalent equation to your original equation. You now found another version of the same thing. Even though you did not do the same thing as our other options. Over here, we added 3x to both sides. Over here, we subtracted 6 on both sides. Over here, we added 4 on both sides. So I meant, I hope I said add 3x to both sides over here. So you did the same thing to both sides, and if you simplify, that will always give you an equivalent equation. Always. That was only three possibilities. We haven't actually explored to see what would happen if we move 2x to the other side. But if you decided to subtract 2x from both sides, so subtract 2x here, subtract 2x here, you would have negative 5x plus 6 equals negative 4. That would be an equivalent equation. I don't have room for the fourth option, so I'm not going to do it. But just know you could have subtracted 2x from both sides, you would have been left with negative 5x plus 6 equals negative 4. So now, I made my first point. We did the same thing to both sides. We found equivalent equations. Now, I want to make sure I make a point with the second point, where I said that equivalent equations will always have the same solution. So let's check. If we want to, if we want to make sure, we're going to, quick, we're going to quickly go through and solve each of these questions. So over here, we're going to get x by itself. So we've got to move minus 4 first. So we add 4 to both sides. So those cancel. And that leaves us with 10 equals 5x. We then have to get rid of our coefficient. Remember, you get rid of all coefficients by dividing. So we divide both sides by 5. So now those cancel. 
and we are left with x equals 2. And that's going to be our answer to that, e to that equation, x equals 2. So now let's check ourselves and see how this one does over here. So now in this equation, we did not combine our x's first, so maybe we should start doing that first. So, I mean, actually we don't have a choice. So if we want to solve this, we've got to combine our x's now. We should always move towards our bigger x. Our bigger x is positive 2x. So you're moving negative 3x. So to move negative 3x, the opposite is plus 3x. So add 3x to both sides. They cancel on the left. So now on the right side, 2x plus 3x, well that gives us 5x. And the minus 10 drops straight down. Okay. Now on the left side, you'll notice the minus 3x, the negative 3x, and the plus 3x, they cancel. There's nothing left over there. So you ask yourself, well, there's nothing over there. What do I write? Ask yourself this, what number is nothing? Well, zero is nothing. So you have a zero over there. So you have zero equals 5x minus 10. In the future, it'll be a creative way sometimes to solve equations when you purposely empty out one side of them. We'll talk about that at a later date, though, in Algebra 1. All right, so now let's see. We got 5x minus 10 equals 0. Our job is we have 1x. We've got to get away from that x. So we're going to add 10 to both sides because we're moving away from the x. So those cancel. Because remember, minus 10 comes later in the order of operations than times 5 does. So that's why it moves first, because we do the order of operations in reverse. So make sure you watch the other videos on that. Okay, so that gives us 10 equals 5x. We then know we have to divide both sides by 5. Divide both sides by 5. That's two different ways of writing the same thing, divided by 5. And so that leaves us with, those cancel. That leaves us with 2 equals x. And if you'll notice, that's the same answer we just had on the left. Now, just to make a point, we'll, I'll quickly go through the other one on the right while briefly explaining what we're doing. We're going to start by combining our x's, moving towards the bigger x. We're going to add 3x to both sides. Okay, those cancel. So we're left with 10 equals 5x. Well, now look, we're not going to divide both sides by 5. Okay, and so those cancel. And then we're left with x equals 2. So you'll notice we got the exact same answer no matter which version you went with. And that's why I made a point with you guys. Technically, you could solve the equation starting off however you want as long as you follow the rules. All three of those versions have the exact same solution, x equals 2. And by the way, that's obviously the solution to our original equation. So to recap one more time, equivalent equations are the result of doing the same thing to both sides. So be, so be creative when sometimes if it's a multiple choice question and which one is an equivalent equation, look at all the options and make sure they did the same thing to both sides to get the simplified equivalent equation. Also, equivalent equations, another way to check, they will have the same solution. So you can always just find the solution of all the options to see which one has the same solution as your original equations. So I hope this helped answer some questions on finding and understanding what an equivalent equation is. It's an equation that's equal to the original equation. See you guys in class. Take care.